Hello everybody and welcome to the channel Out of Ammo, Out of Time. I'm your host, as always, Krabby Terror 8, and here we are in part 40. Yes, I remembered it this time, part 40 of the season one of the Investigator Games with everybody's favourite nun, Sister Mary. Yes, and for those of you new to the channel, I welcome you heartily. Uh, welcome. What is the Investigator Games? Well, as those who have watched these endless videos, it's like the Hunger Games. We take every investigator, and this is the 40th, uh, through a scenario. Uh, and in Season 1, it is The Gathering. Season 2, which is well underway, is uh, in the Midnight Masks. And no doubt Season 3, no spoilers there, will be um, the third scenario, The Devourer Below. But anyway, we're back here in Season 1 with Sister Mary the Nun, and depending on how they go, um, they end up in a league table like this one. So this shows all the investigators and their performance. Nothing to do with me, of course. Uh, their performance from the very top to all the way down to the very bottom. I think Calvin, I don't have the um, table in front of me right now, but I think Calvin's down at the very bottom. Uh, now, when they play Midnight Masks, we add on their um, victory points there and, and so on and so on. So you can see how that's changed. That changes over time. Yes, and spoilers, if you are brand new to the um, Arkham Horror, the living card game, I would encourage you to go and seek out other introductory videos. Play the game a bit yourself first. I appreciate that some people come here because they haven't played very much and they want to see how the gathering works or they want to see how some investigators might work that's fine but i am assuming you know how to play at least a little bit so uh, if you are absolutely brand new never played before please go and do that first um yes so here we are with sister mary she is the guardian investigator for the brand new campaign that has been released um, which is the, is it the Shadow over Innsmouth? Or I should know this, shouldn't I? But it's uh, the, I'll call it the Innsmouth campaign. You think I would know the actual official title of it? But um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm very excited to play it. But what I generally do with campaigns is I wait till all the scenarios have been released and then I play them. So I'm only now playing uh, the previous um, campaign. Uh, Dream Eaters. I've only just started going through that and really enjoying that. So I'll wait uh, for Innsmouth, but there's no reason to wait for the investigators themselves. So Sister Mary, she's a nun. She is um, traitor, believer, and blessed, which gives us a hint about a new mechanic, um, which we'll talk about, which is uh, part of the Innsmouth, 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 I'm not sure, campaign. So let's have a look at Sister Mary. She uh, She's a uh, guardian mystic, uh, which is an interesting combination. Almost, if you like, I feel in some ways a slightly contradictory combination and a bit, a bit strange for a, a nun to be a guardian mystic. But I, I suppose, like Carolyn Fern, it's moving away from just merely being about police, police people. Uh, and, and private investigators and the like and soldiers and extending guardians into other sorts of people whose job I suppose they see as to defend and protect others and I guess Sister Mary would fall into that very much so. So if we have a look at her um, stat line it's fairly robust actually but nothing sort of a huge standout. But as you would expect for, I um, just thought it'd be interesting to have a Father Matteo, <laughs> Sister Mary combo, uh, lots of spiritual guidance and support. Um, anyway, uh, so she has very high will, well, high-ish willpower, I should say, with a four willpower. Her intellect um, is only two, though. Um, fight is three and evade, and, and um, I call it evade, but it's vitality is three, which is sort of average. So um, not too bad, but Sister Mary, particularly in solo, uh, clearly going to have less issues with the encounter deck, but going to have some issues in actually getting clues um, with two intellect. Um, that's going to make it quite tough. 
uh, unless, of course, uh, you've got things like the flashlight and whatnot to help out, which she certainly does in in her um, deck, which we'll go through in a second. But she has another way of sort of mitigating her fairly sort of averagey stats as well. So this is where the blessed and cursed um, chaos tokens come into play. So actually during setup, so this is her special abilities, during setup add two blessed tokens to the chaos bag, which we have done. I'll just uh, show you that if you're not used to not used to those. So yes, here are the two blessed tokens to the standard chaos bag. So they uh, are added at um, at the setup. And then there is a uh, reaction trigger that when the round ends, <clears throat> got to try and remember this because it's easy to forget, add a blessed token to the chaos bag. Now blessed tokens essentially, on, so some investigators are, are sort of chaos bag manipulators. We saw that with Jacqueline Fine and others where they essentially kind of draw multiple chaos tokens and sort of, you know, choose the one they like or whatever it may be, kind of stack things. System Mary doesn't essentially manipulate the chaos bag as much as stack it to, in her favor because these blessed tokens, if you draw one, you immediately get a plus two uh, benefit, but then you have to draw another token as well. Uh, so uh, it gives you a plus two benefit, but you still have to reveal another token. Uh, and uh, and then, of course, you resolve the uh, resolve the effect. And then that blessed token doesn't go back in. It then goes back into the token pool and you can never have more than 10 blessed tokens in the chaos bag at any one time. Now, I have the rest. I have a stack of them over here. Um, that's the way Octagon does things. So I've got eight here. There's two in the bag. So I, I can never go beyond the 10 uh, if, if we get to that because every round you're putting in new ones. Now, obviously, the more that are in there, the more likely you are to draw one. So, um, you know, getting up to 10 is, is not impossible, but, but, but you know, obviously the more there are in there, the more likely it is that you'll be pulling them back out again. Um, so essentially, uh, whilst, for example, her intellect is relatively low, if, if there's a number of blessed tokens in the chaos bag, that's going to improve her chances because if you draw a blessed token, it would go up. That would be plus two to the skill test. Then you have to draw another token, but you're then up to four. So um, unless you're, you're you're drawing, particularly in the gathering, something like an auto fail, you're likely to succeed. Um, now there is a there is a uh, sort of mirror image set of tokens which are curse tokens, which work exactly the same except in reverse. So minus two. Um, as well. Now her elder sign effect is plus one. It's sort of standard now with elder sign effects. And if you succeed, add a extra token to the chaos bag. So again, adding more tokens. So essentially that's, that's what she does. Now the other thing is in solo, of course, uh, it's just Sister Mary drawing, but of course in a multiplayer game, what Sister Mary is doing is adding blessed tokens for everybody. So this is a benefit that everybody can get, which again makes it different to sort of chaos bag manipulation, like a Jacqueline Fine or someone. I mean, she can, other people can actually use that if they're in the same location. But in this case, there's no same location specification. So uh, essentially Sister Mary is stacking the chaos bag for everybody. Now, of course, if you've got multiple players, there's going to be multiple people drawing and removing blessed tokens. So I suppose it, you know, th that means that, that getting up to 10 is going to be even less likely. But it really is a sort of a very strong support kind of, and, uh, and if you read the um, official Fantasy Flight game starter deck text that goes with this, they very much talk about Sister Mary being a support character rather than a on her own but that you know it's the investigator game so we will be playing that way so there we have it there's her special abilities the lord watches over my path i am armored in faith so uh, and yes you can see that kind of reflected in her 
um, physical and mental strength. She's not particularly the world's most robust individual with only five physical strength, but she, she has a massive nine mental ability, which I guess reflects her very strong faith. So uh, she can be she can absorb horror for days. Um, just not really someone you want taking too much uh, damage uh, in that way. So there we go. That's Sister Mary. If we just, uh, flip, sorry, we just um, flip her card, we can see that standard deck size, she takes Guardian cards not to five, neutral cards not to five, and Mystic cards level not to two. So um, yeah, Guardian and Mystic, interesting combination because she's not an offensive mystic in the sense that she's really about kind of fighting that way and um, I guess there's not a card pool yet that if you like you know in a in a something like I don't know a Dungeons and Dragons or something like that you would have a sort of a um, a some kind of um, I don't know what you would call them sorry it's been a long time since I played those sorts of games but you've 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 got particular um people who rely on spiritual strength rather than spells if you like so more yeah like a paladin i suppose or uh, so, someone like 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 that um or you know what i know more is if you if you've played uh, dark souls uh there's there's sort of hexes and, and, and spells but then there's what they call miracles which are people who sort of draw on spiritual guidance to enact magical influences which tend to be around healing and those sorts of things less offensive if you like uh, at the moment in arkham horror the living card game that's not really a kind of a side type of um or a sub subgenre of investigator i suppose with a with a with a card pool that doesn't exist i mean there are some blessed um cards and father mateo um sort of orients to that but it's not a it's not a significant card pool at the moment whereas for example um in seeker as we saw with harvey there is a sort of a, a subgroup now where you can enact magical spells not through not not through spells themselves not through a mystic path but through reading tomes so it would be interesting to see whether that is a, a theme that gets developed more in arkham horror the card game i'd like to see that i think for a father mateo or a, a sister mary the idea of being able to draw on some kind of spiritual source to enact sort of magical abilities and i guess blessed is sort of getting that way but it's something that probably um you know could be developed further i imagine um so the more sister mary learns of the strange and arcane forces that sometimes manifest in this world the more certain she is that she has been set upon a path to ward off these forces and protect the innocent wherever possible Armed only with the trappings of the church, of her church and an unshakable faith, Sister Mary seeks out every supernatural threat she, she hears of through her fellow priests and nuns. Other members of the church may dismiss such things as medieval nonsense, but Sister Mary knows that the real evils that exist in the shadows, and she knows that if such evils are left unchecked, they will bring ruin and horror to all of creation. Yes, indeed. So there we go. There's Sister Mary. Okay, so that's uh, Sister Mary in a nutshell. Let's have a look at her deck. Now, this is the Fantasy Flight Games official starter deck. Uh, it's just come out. Um, now, they're less than optimum because they kind of assume you've bought the Innsmouth Conspiracy. I think it's called the Innsmouth Conspiracy, I think. And um, you have that and you've got the um, the sort of the starter pack and that's all you've got so you're kind of relying on one uh one starter pack of cards and the Innsmouth ones so they can seem a little less than optimum 
I guess. Um, so they sort of do their best, I suppose, with what's available. Um, but it do, does lead to some challenges. However, this is the investigator game. So every investigator is treated the same way. So um, that's just the way that it goes. Uh, it does lead to some interesting sort of thematic anomalies in this one, I have to say. Um, I'm not sure why Sister Mary will be chucking dynamite around, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let that one go. So, um, yeah, so let's have a look at her signature card. Uh, it's Guardian Angel. It's a two-cost asset with three pips, which is pretty standard, one of them being a wild card. Guardian Angel may be assigned damage dealt to other investigators at your location and connecting locations. Well, that doesn't really apply to us because we're in solo. Uh, um, and then there's a reaction trigger. When any amount of damage is assigned to Guardian Angel, add that many blessed tokens to the Chaos Bag. So, I mean, Sister Mary is not particularly robust, so this gives her a, an extra soak. And at the same time, it's chucking in more, um, essentially three extra blessed tokens into the Chaos Bag. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's all fine. Uh, her signature weakness is called Crisis of Faith, um, which um, could be potentially quite nasty uh, depending on when it turns up. Um, so it really depends on how many, you know, because for each blessed token in the Chaos Bag, you must either replace it with a curse token or take a horror. So, um, you know... As you said, you could have up to 10 blessed tokens. So, you know, if you drew this after you'd put, there are 10 blessed tokens in the chaos bag, unlikely, I know, but possible that that, that would be very nasty. Um, um, I'm assuming for each one, so you don't have to do one or the other. So I suppose you could decide, oh, I'll put in five cursed and take five horror or something like that uh, it, it, it's saying for each one so it's not like you have to do it all one or all the other now the other thing is she drew a random um, weakness it's just uh, drawn randomly on on arkham db and uh, quite a <laughs> quite a thematic uh thematic uh, card to draw really uh nihilism which is a, I think it's a relatively new basic weakness, uh, but really great for Sister Mary. You can imagine this happening to her, but put nihilism into play in your threat area. And after you reveal, cancel, or ignore the auto fail token, take a damage and a horror, and you can just take two actions to discard nihilism. So not not too bad. It's a pretty, pretty good weakness and a nice thematic alignment that just was randomly drawn there. So there we go. So those are the core cards. Then we get into some uh, some cards which are new, which came out with the Innsmouth uh, expansion and um, seem to be aligned, obviously, with Sister Mary. But of course, Sister Mary isn't the only one who needs to take these but here we have the book of psalms uh, with four secrets interesting that now secrets are moving into this area so there's an action to spend a secret heal horror from an investigator at your location and add two blessed tokens to the chaos bag now this is uh, an asset so you could do this four times so this is a way of again stacking the um the chaos bag with more blessed tokens a couple of those. Then we have another one, which is the Ward of Radiance, which is a mystic card. Uh, it's insight and blessed trait. I think these are all blessed traits. So this is uh, this is this new. Um, so I suppose it is a sort of a sub theme in a way. So fast play when an investigator at your location draws a non weakness treachery card. Reveal five random chaos tokens from the chaos bag. If a blessed or an elder sign token is revealed, cancel that treachery card's revelation effect. So it's a little bit like the ward of protection, I suppose, but using the um, using the the blessed the blessed 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 uh, cards there to to stop a uh, a treachery card. And then we have hand of fate, which again is another blessed one. Play when an enemy attacks an investigator at your location. It's a fast play. Cancel that attack and then add tokens to the Chaos Bag equal to the attacking enemy's total combined damage and horror values. So there you go. That's uh, another way of stacking the deck with 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 those and a way uh, of of um, uh, offsetting any kinds of attacks that there might be. It's pricey, I suppose. That's the main problem with this particular card. But like a lot of Guardian cards, they do need quite a bit of cash. And then speaking of 
pricey, but not pricey. This is a zero cost asset called Right of Sanctification. Again, it's a it's a blessed card to, uh, traded. You can seal up to five um, blessed tokens. Um, uh, and if Right of Sanctification has no tokens sealed on it, discard it. So you don't want to play it when there's no obviously blessed tokens in the in the uh, in the chaos bag. You would obviously be best if there was five of them. It has a reaction trigger when an investigator at your location plays a card. Just plays a card. Uh, doesn't commit cards, plays a card. Exhaust Right of Sanctification and release a chaos token sealed on it, reduce the cost of that card by two. So uh, essentially, again, uh, you know, in a support in a support kind of multiplier, this is a way that System Airy makes what, assets, I suppose, allies and assets a bit cheaper. Probably a little bit less, um, a little bit less useful, I guess, in solo, but, but you know, still okay. And finally, in terms of the blessed ones, we actually have a blessed blade. Um, and uh, this is a pretty good card, actually, um, because it, a three cost asset action, if blessed blade is ready, fight, you get plus one for this attack. And if a um, blessed or elder sign token is revealed during the attack, it deals plus one damage. Um, now, before revealing Chaos Tokens for this attack, you can exhaust Blessed Blade and add a, add a Blessed Token to the Chaos Bag as well. So, um, yeah, so... Um, but that's a kind of a bit of a one-off because if you exhaust the Blessed Blade, you've got to add to the Chaos Bag, um, then you've kind of used it because then if it's ready fight you get plus one so you would then have to wait so you just got to be a bit careful about that but if there are quite a lot of blessed chaos tokens in the bag then the likelihood of you getting the plus plus one damage is is quite high and of course chances of you succeeding is improved as well so that's good that that's there because the only other offensive spells and i'm thinking about the um Ghoul Priest here is, of course, the standard Shriveling, which is in nearly every starter deck for Mystics. But there's only one of them, as usual, not two of them. So uh, this is a good card, good card for Sister Mary, because she has uh, f uh, four willpower. Um, <clears throat> but again, there's only one of them, so you have to use it very sparingly. But thankfully, we have another way of being, a you know, offensive weaponry. But we would want the shriveling out for the ghoul priest. The the other card, which is kind of amusing, as I said, is Dynamite Blast. A very expensive card. Um, uh, and quite amusing that Sister Mary, the idea of a nun chucking around... Um, dynamite it's kind of quite funny uh and then we have a couple of allies here we've got a beat cop and we've got a guard dog so beat cop and guard dog are both there and then um after that we've got a whole slew of sort of standard you know mystic cards that that that, that, that were sort of the standard in the sort of base game we've got arcane studies um you know again quite expensive um, to use um, so the problem with problem with these cards like arcane studies for someone like sister mary is just simply having the cash um, the uh, uh, blinding light uh, scrying and forbidden knowledge and holy rosary which of course is very thematically strong uh, so here's an, a case of where it's very strong and um, we would definitely want that that would be very nice if we can get the shriveling and holy rosary down on the table i think we'll do pretty well we've got a water protection we've got a fearless and we've got a good old drawn to the flame drawn to the flame um named after that podcast podcast that was so good that they named a card after it there you go and then we've got a couple more guardian ones vicious blow uh evidence again is thematically kind of a bit weird really um because yeah Sister Mary doesn't feel like a sleuth, but anyway, physical training, which, you know, like Arcane Studies, all very well, but do you have the cash? A good old dodge, good old first aid, and then um, relatively few. So they seem to have moved away from putting in earlier standard starter decks, had a lot more neutral cards in. I'm not sure why, but they've stopped putting them in so much. So, for example... 
you know, it would be good for Sister Mary to have a couple of perceptions in here or something like that to shore up her intellect. But we don't have that. But we do have the flashlight and we do have an emergency cache. So there we go. There's the deck. What do we think about that? I know it's a starter deck, but, you know, it is what it is. Interesting cards, interesting dynamic. So uh, there we go. Let's uh, close and shuffle up. Sister Mary's deck, we are here, ready to roll in the gathering. I've just put out all the cards. No, no, no need to, to wait for that. Um, we will shuffle up our own deck. We will uh, shuffle up the uh, encounter deck. So they're all shuffled up. There we go. So I think we're ready to read out the act and agenda deck. And then all we have to do is just wait for the horn to go. Um, I also spoke to Sister Mary beforehand in the green room. We only spoke very br briefly because when I went into the green room, there were candles lit around the room. Um, she had Gregorian chants playing and she uh, invited me to kneel and pray with her um, for the investigator games. And um, so we did that. And uh, she prayed that she would have the strength and forbearance to, um, to, to uh, succeed uh, in this particular um, scenario so we'll see if her prayers are answered I guess <laughs> uh, and yes she is actually in the study and she is uh, praying she's got her rosary beads she's got candles lit in the study she's ignoring the crowds that are coming in they're very quiet I guess they're, they're, they're being very respectful of her um, so yes uh, we'll see how she goes but let's read the agenda and the act deck so what's going on it's late at night you're holed up in your study researching the bloody disappearances that have been taking place in the region a few hours into your research you hear the sound of strange chanting coming from the parlor down the hall is that my gregorian chant cd running again hmm. at the same time you hear dirt churning as if something were digging beneath the floor Trapped as you leap to investigate, the door to your study vanishes before your eyes, leaving behind only a solid wall. You're trapped inside your study until you can find another way out. Indeed, and we are playing on easy and standard. We are in turn one. And, oh, there it goes. There goes the horn and Sister Mary stands up and uh, the crowd goes wild. She waves gently at the uh, at the crowd and looks to start the investigator games episode 40 okay so here we are what do we want what do we want what do we want well i think we've already talked about this to a degree we it would be great to get an ally it would be great to get the get shriveling and the knife um, and other than that, um, I think they're the main things and, and, and a flashlight would be good because we're not going to be able to investigate the cellar at all unless we have ways of doing that. So they're probably the main things that I'm interested in at the moment. So let's, let's, let's shovel and draw up our five cards. So let's go ahead and draw five and see what we get okay well there are no allies there are no weapons uh yeah i'm not uh, i'm uh, i'm really not liking this draw i'm going to be really aggressive and i'm going to just chuck them all out and draw another five uh i didn't really i mean there wasn't the, there were some there were some good cards there but there we go that's much better that's much better so there we go now um let's have a look I'll just shuffle that up. So we've got the drawn to the flame. So that's great actually because we can use that in the cellar and we don't even need to use our we don't even use things like flashlight. We've got the shriveling, so that's good. Uh hand of fate, that's a nice card if we've got the money, particularly if we uh, you know, the ghoul ghoul priest retaliation, something like that. Emergency cash, that's also good because uh it's easier to run out of money. And scrying's not a bad card either. Um yeah, but uh, interesting. Okay, good. All right. Well, that's better, uh, but no weapon. So the thing we're missing is no allies. Oh, well, we've got shriveling, but it would be nice to have the blessed blade as well, because then we can deal with other, you know, ghoul minions. I don't want to be using shriveling on ghoul, ghoul minions. So first action, 
Um, and let me just remind myself here. We did that set up. So when the round ends, so we've got to remember when the round ends, I'll try and remember to add the blessed token to the chaos bag. So that's the thing we've got to try and remember. Okay, so first action, I'm going to, I am going to spend three. And I'm going to bring out, I'll put it on this side, shriveling, just get it out on the table, four charges. Yep, get that out. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Um, do we bring out scrying at the moment? Um, hmm. Yeah, I suppose we should because we can look at the top three cards of the Investigator's deck or the Encounter deck and put them back in any order. Um, it's particular. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Maybe we need the Intellect Pip, to be honest, actually, thinking about it because we're going to investigate. So let's go ahead and investigate. So we are a two versus a two. Ouch, two versus two. I know there are a couple of blessed cards in there. So what I might do is I might go ahead and see if we can just investigate straight up two versus two. Chaos bag gives us, oh, and here we go. Straight off the bat, we get a blessed. So what you do is you bring that out. Now on octagon, you've got to be a bit careful because it's a bit funny with chaos tokens and how they work. Draw an additional token from the chaos bag so we get a skull. So basically... What that did was that that gave us a plus two. I'll just uh, yeah, I'll just double check there. Um, yeah, plus two. Then reveal another token. So that gives us a four. Then the uh, then the skull, of course, gives us a zero because there are no ghoul enemies. So we absolutely succeed, and we get that clue. That's very nice. Um, now this goes back into the pool, uh, and this goes back into the bag yeah I have to be really careful I'm just found that with chaos tokens you just got to be really careful about how it all works because in octagon they can end up in all kinds of funny places that's why I've got the ones over here because if I left the blessed tokens sort of sitting around the table it it sometimes puts them back into the bag and things like that if you delete them it puts them in other places so just yeah Okay, so we've got another action. Um, let's go ahead and um, investigate again. I'm going to commit scrying this time to this. So that's going to give us a three versus a two. A three versus a two. Chaos bag gives us a minus one. I'm glad I did that. So there we go. We succeed again. And there we go. We've got both of our clues. So there we go. That was uh, that was a pretty good round, actually. We we brought out scrying, just uh, scrying. We brought out shriveling, just to make sure we've got that. We then investigated and got a blessed token, and then skull, which was great. And then we um, committed scrying, and we got the other uh, clue as well. So we have both of our clues. I'm not going to throw them in yet because we might draw something like a ghoul minion, and I would rather not deal or a or a you know, ravenous school or something so we know that if we throw those in then we can get rid of that monster next time so we will uh, we will wait before we throw in our clues so we move into the enemy phase or the enema phase as i like to call it and of course there are no enemies indeed no enemas to speak of so we will move into the upkeep phase and we get evidence okay well it's got a double intellect so that's uh that's nice. Because um, the other thing we could do, particularly with lots of blessed tokens, is we could look to get Leader Chandler. Um, yeah, but we've got Shriveling. It would be really good to get uh, um, get the Holy Rosary. But anyway, so evidence. Um, I mean, I feel like, you know, you should have the, you know, Sister Mary should have the Holy Rosary on the deck ready to roll from the beginning it feels a bit strange she doesn't but anyway so that's the upkeep phase so we move into the first mythos phase the first doom is down on the table let's see what the lovely encounter deck has for us ah yes you're all screaming at me whoa 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 actually i might i might remember this when the doom goes down we have to add we have to add at the end of the round 
add a um yes add a blessed token to the chaos bag so let's take out a blessed token and let's add that to the chaos bag there we go okay cool all right um okay So let's see what the lovely encounter deck has. So I lost my train of thought there for a second. And we start with the ghoul minion. There we go. Hello, sister. Um, so yes, ghoul minion down on the table. So I'm glad we didn't throw in our clues because the ghoul minion is toast, unfortunately, for the ghoul minion. So we will move into the investigation phase. Three actions onto Sister Mary. And... Um, yes so let's just go ahead and throw in the two clues um and so we can flip trapped you notice that the edges of your newly purchased rug are tattered and mud-stained finding this odd you shift the furniture aside and pull back the rug to your surprise you see the door leading out of your study you slowly turn the knob and the door swings open, revealing your hallway below. You jump through the doorway, landing on your feet on soft dirt. The door to your study slams shut above you. The smell of burning wood fills the narrow hall, intermingled with the scent of rot and decay. So we put aside the we put into play the hallway cellar and attic and parlor. We discard each enemy from the study. Bye bye. Ah. Uh, place the investigator in the hallway and remove the study from the game. There we go. So we're doink. We're in the hallway. Let's flip the hallway. Boink. And the study has gone. There we go. Nice. So we are now at the barrier. A glowing barrier blocks the path to your parlor. As you move towards it, intense heat forces you to back away. Picking up a handful of dirt, you toss it at the barrier and watch in horror as the dirt incinerates. Perhaps there's something in the cellar or the attic that can help. When the round ends, investigators in the hallway may, as a group... Spend the requisite number of clues to advance. Okie dokie. So pretty quick. Sister Mary's pretty quick so far. So we might as well keep being quick um, and pop up to the attic. Ah -dee -da, -dee da Up to the attic. Uh, flip the attic. One clue. Yes. And uh, the lack of uh, religious paraphernalia here. Uh, um and uh, quite upset Sister Mary, and she takes a horror. The horror. Okay, so we've got two actions left. Um, it's a one and we're a two, so we're a one versus a two. Um, I think we just straight up investigate, I think. Why is there only one clue on there? There we go. Uh, so let's straight up investigate. One versus two. Chaos Bag gives us another blessed car, uh, token. Very nice. So let's uh, also draw an additional token and we get a tablet. Now a tablet is a minus two. Um, so we were a two, four, minus two gives us a two versus a one. So we succeed and we get the clue. Very nice. Now again, um, let's just put that back in here and we will put this back in here. There we go. Awesome. Very nice. And let's do it again. Let's investigate again. So a one versus a two. And the Casper gives us an elder sign. Well, we really are blessed, aren't we? So uh, not only did we succeed, but um, we uh, add another blessed token to the chaos bag. Wow. There we go. Fantastic. Pretty good. We've been getting a lot of blessed tokens, actually. That's been great. So there we go. And the crowd goes wild because she, Sister Mary, it's only turn two and she's she's already, she's already gotten the clues up in the attic. That's right, isn't it? She got the two clues. She, yeah, she's, she's setting a blistering pace right here. Incredible. There we go. Okay. So that was another very successful, um, um, <laughs> very successful turn for Sister Mary. Uh, so we will move into the enema phase. No enemies to speak of. So we move into upkeep and we get a uh, fearless. Very nice. Uh, and we add, of course, another blessed token to the chaos bag. There we go. Because it's the end of the round. 
Okay, so let's move into the good old Mythos phase. There are now two Doom Down. Let's see what the lovely encounter deck has for us. And it has Ancient Evils. Okay, there we go. Ancient Evils. Um, which means, yep, that's moved quicker than we thought. So the agenda is keeping up with our speed as well. Your house continues to change before your very eyes. The walls have decayed and the ground in many rooms has turned to dirt. It's almost as if you've been transported somewhere else entirely. Although every now and again you recognise elements of your former home. Ah, there's that picture of me with John Paul II. Ah, there's my special um, um, Bible. Ah, I wondered where that had gone. Ah, there are my golden rosary beads. The lead investigator must decide. Either each investigator discards one card at random from his or her hand or takes two horror. Hmm. Well, um, I'm just going to take the two horror. We've got horror to burn. We can do that. Okay, so we are now in Rise of the Ghouls. The floor beneath you is giving way, and you see a vast network of tunnels twisting into the darkness below. Shapes and silhouettes of strange creatures move swiftly through the tunnels, trying to find a way up. You probably don't want to be here when they do. Indeed. Okay. All right, so um, yes, now that flipped because of Ancient Evils. So I'm nearly going to draw another encounter card, but we don't. So um, we will move into the investigation phase. Three actions onto Sister Mary. Well, I guess we will just go ahead and go doink to the hallway and doink down to the cellar. We'll flip the cellar, boink, and uh, two clues. Now, as uh, Sister Mary is going down the stairs, she's looking for her rosary beads, wondering where the hell they're, well, where the hell they are, where in God's name they are. And uh, she's not watching what she's doing as she slips and goes tumbling down the stairs and takes a damage. Ouch. There we go. Okay, so we're here in the cellar. We've got one action left. Um, why don't we just use this? Yeah, let's use Drawn to the Flame. So we will use Drawn, drawn to the Flame. Um, draw the top card of the encounter deck. Let's see what we get. <laughs> Good job we did. Obscuring fog. Wow. There we go. So, wow, that was really, I'm just really glad that we did that because uh, the cellar with obscuring fog would have been really, really nasty. Uh, discover two clues at your location. Wow. The crowd goes absolutely wild for Sister Mary as she gets the second turn three and we have all of our clues. Oh my goodness. This is just like a dream run. Um, so uh, that is fantastic. So the thing I'm thinking now is that if we are going to use shriveling on the ghoul priest, um, we need, we you know, we need things like the Holy Rosary or we're going to need to need, get the knife out or something because... Um, I think, you know, the, the ghoul priest has a willpower of four and we are a willpower of four, a uh, fight of four and we're a willpower of four. So that's a zero, zero. So unless we're stacked with lots and lots and lots of blessed tokens, we're going to need a few more before I feel comfortable that we can take on the ghoul priest. Or we try and get leader Chandler. But that means, you know, two, three, four, four versus a three is not great either. So we would need a lot more intellect cards. So I guess the other thing would be if we draw um, arcane studies or something like that so we can actually buy our way as well. So we need something like that before we can take on the ghoul priest. So whilst it's great, if we took on the ghoul priest as we are at the moment, we are likely to probably die or fail um, we need to be more robust than that but anyway we'll worry about that down the track but that's uh, quite a blistering start for sister mary okay so we will move into the enemy phase and then we'll move into upkeep and we get right of sanctification so there we go now we've got three intellect pips now so it's starting to feel like actually trying to get leader chandler uh, might be worthwhile but the problem is how do we evade the ghoul priest to get in there that that's the other problem we don't you know, we would need to, um, we would need to use, we would need to use Hand of Fate or something because what we would need to do is 
move, take an attack of opportunity, use a hand of fate. Um, yeah, that kind of thing, and then and then try and get her that way. I think that's the kind of thing that we would need to do. Okay, so that's the upkeep phase. So we move into the mythos phase. The first doom is Dan, and yes, I mustn't forget to. Oops, what am I doing? I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's take a blessed token and let's stick it in the chaos bag. There we go. Cool. All right, so um, let's see what the encounter deck has. And the encounter deck, ooh, hello? The encounter deck has rotting remains. Yes, okay, so rotting remains. Test three, we're already a four. I don't want to, well, no, I don't want to commit anything to this. So we're a four versus a three. Chaos bag it gives us a zero, no problem. So she's, uh, Sister Mary's not worried about a few rotting remains. She's seen worse. Okay, investigation phase. Three actions onto Sister Mary. Um, yes. Hmm. Even if we got Leader Chandler, get plus one fight, which we're not really using, but we would do plus one damage. So if we were using Shriveling, that would mean we would do three points of damage with Leader Chandler. But that's assuming we were successful with doing a, yeah, it all feels like a whole lot of things have to happen. So I think, I think ideally what we have to do is start drawing some cards. Uh, yes. Um, so first action, we will draw. Book of Psalms. <clears throat> okay, well, that's another willpower pip. So we've now got one, two, three willpower pips. Okay, second action. Draw again, and we get uh, nihilism. Um... Auto fail, okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, third action. Hmm. Do we... I might throw an emergency cash. Give myself some more money. And I hope we get um, something like a rite of passage, even though I dissed it. I'm now thinking it might be quite helpful. So there we go. So, yeah, unfortunately we didn't... I mean, we gained an extra willpower pip. So we now have three of them, which means, you know, we can kind of reasonably successfully get the ghoul priest once. But um, I'm feeling like uh, we need more. So anyway, let's see how we go. So that's the end of our turn. We move into the enemy phase. There are no enemies to speak of. So we move into upkeep, get the flashlight. Wow, someone's really telling us we should go and get Leader Chandler, aren't they? Um, mm, okay. Um, so we move into the Mythos phase to Doom and Down. Let's see what the encounter deck has. Yeah, Ancient Evils, so that's just another Doom. That's fine. Okay, cool. All right, so let's move into... Ah, and I nearly forgot. We put another... Um, put another one on here so I'm actually thinking I'm actually thinking that we move into the hallway we draw a couple of cards see how we go and I think the leader Chandler approach is um is the way to go particularly if we'll be able to stack the blessed um deck with um extra tokens so that's what I'm thinking so let's put three actions onto um sister Mary First action, we will move up to the hallway. Uh, second action, we will draw another card. Uh, blinding light. Oh, you can evade. Okay. Um, mm, so that's that's certainly something we could do for the ghoul priest. That's good. And then final action, we will draw again. Uh, and we get another flashlight. So I think, yeah, the fates are telling us we go and get Leader Chandler. Okay. 
All right, that's the end of our turn. So we move into the enemy phase. There is no enemy to speak of. So we move into upkeep. Uh, we've got too many cards now. So we've got to throw something away. Ah, oh, we got the Holy Rosary. Oh, okay, that changes things. What do we throw away? Oh. Probably, probably Blinding Light. Uh, that changes things um, because plus one willpower would make a big difference. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, the question is, do we... Do we throw in the clues now? Um, or do we wait another round and bring out the Holy Rosary? Hmm. See, if we have Leader Chandler, we only have to succeed... Um, twice and there's like there's 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 now five there's a lot of blessed tokens so i think we go ahead i think we go ahead and do it because we're only in turn five so this would be amazing if she did this by turn six so um because we would move parley yeah but even then we wouldn't finish. But it feels like a more interesting thing to do than what we normally do. So I'm feeling like uh, I'm feeling like we should do it. I think we should do it. So uh, let's go ahead. So because um, the other alternative is to wait till turn six, bring out the Holy Rosary, which gives us a five. Maybe that is better, actually. Otherwise, it's really convoluted because then in turn six, no, but then we would be on turn six and then it would be turn seven. Ah, so. Oh, let's go ahead and throw them in and see how we go. All right, let's throw in the three clues. Um, so um, let's flip this. Using the barrel from the attic, you carry ice and snow from the cellar and hurl it at the barrier. The barrier sparks and shudders as it consumes the ice and then hisses and fades out of existence. The barrier blocking the passage into the parlour is van vanished, revealing the parlour. So Leader Chandler is in the parlour and the ghoul priest. Hello, sister. Oh, feeling a bit nihilistic, are we? Oh, I don't see much on the table. Oh, I think you're going down. <laughs> All right, so what have you done? A woman with a torch stands in your parlour, a glimmer of hatred in her eyes. What have you done, sister, to my barrier? She screams furious. But before you can answer, a ghastly wail sounds behind you, and a creature wearing robes and a deer skull mask tears through the wall, advancing towards you. If the ghoul priest is defeated, advance. There we go. So we're in the end of the round, so we can put another blessed token. There's a lot of them in there now into the is that right we do that every time when the round ends yeah okay all right okay so um yes so that's the end of the round so we move into the mythos phase there are four doom down let's see what the encounter deck gives us hello encounter deck and we get another rotting remains so i think we just straight up do that again so that's a uh, four versus a three. Chaos bag, it gives us a tablet, which is a minus two. If there's a ghoul enemy at your location, there is, you take a damage. So we take a damage, um, but also um, we did a minus two. So that's two versus three. So we also take a horror. Ooh, 
Ouch. Okay, that was a bit unfortunate. Anyway, never mind. Okay. Right, that was a little bit unfortunate. Anyway, never mind, it could have been worse. Okay, so here we are in um, the investigation phase. Three actions on to Sister Mary. So the first action is we are going to move. We're going to move into the parlour. Um, now, of course, the ghoul priest comes with us and we get an attack of opportunity. So when an uh, enemy attacks an investigator at your location, will cancel that attack. So we're going to pay the three. Let me just... So we pay three. We cancel that attack and add uh, tokens to the chaos bag equal to the attacking enemy's total combined damage and horror values. So that's four. Four. So we add four. That's all of them now. That's that's the ten. So there is a full complement. Uh, wow. I didn't think we would get there, but we have. <laughs> so many of them in there. We are blessed beyond recognition. So here we are in the parlor with the ghoul priest, but what we're going to do now is we are going to parley with Leader Chandler. So our second action is to parley. So it's a test of four. We're a two, but we can... Uh, that makes us a four. That makes us a five. That makes us a six. That makes us a seven. So we are a seven. <laughs> a seven versus a four. A seven versus a four. Chaos bag, of course, gives us a blessed token. <laughs> so we also draw a skull. Whoops, that token disappeared because I, yeah, it does that. It replaces. So we will just um, get that out again. Yeah, so that's the problem with the chaos bag, the way that it works. So that's all right. So we get a skull, which is a minus one, but we got plus two. So we more than, we more than succeeded. So we can put that back in here. Um, that can go back into the chaos bag. So there we go. We more than we probably over egged that, but it doesn't matter. Uh, main thing was that we passed it. So we get Leader Chandler. Hello, oh hello, Sister Mary. It's lovely to team up with you. Girl power. Let's kill this girl priest. Yeah. Right. So we've got Leader Chandler on on board. Uh, which means that we get plus one fight, but that's not really what we're after is it's really about the plus one damage. So speaking of which, our final action, we will attack the ghoul priest. So he has a um, he has a fight of four. We're obviously going to use shriveling. So um, we are a four. So we're a four versus a four, but um, we're going to use a five, six, Oh, bloody hell, let's just go seven. So we're a seven versus a four. A seven versus a four. Now, if we draw one of those tokens, of course, we take a horror. Seven versus a four. Chaos bag gives us a minus two, which means we succeed. Fantastic. Now, first of all, because we succeed, we heal a horror. These all go into there. And we do um, one, two, three. Three points of damage to the ghoul priest. Ow! There we go. So, uh, very nice. He's nearly dead. We'll see how we go. Nihilism isn't doing anything. Yeah. You reveal, cancel. There we go. All right. Well, we've got nothing in our hand either. So, we will move into the enemy phase. The, um, the ghoul priest attacks. So, we'll might as well just uh, put two and two on two liter. Oh, ow! Don't do that to me, ghoulie! Ow, that hurt! Um, so, there we go. That's the attack from the ghoul priest. So, we will move into the upkeep phase. Oh, we'll get a dodge. <laughs> Very nice. Perfect. Um, and, um, great. Uh, end of the round, we put a, uh, we put a blessed token back into um, the um, chaos bag. Uh, so, we move into the... Um, Move into the turn seven, into the mythos phase. Um, let's see what the encounter deck has for us. And the encounter deck 
I was going to say not a frozen in fear. It is a frozen in fear. Ah, boy, of course it is. Oh, man, of all the cards to get. But anyway, nothing we can do about that. So that's... Uh... Oh, Sister Mary, feeling a bit worried, are you? So let's move into the investigation phase. Three actions on to Sister Mary. We'll spend two actions. And we will shrivel again. We will shrivel again. Uh, so we are a four. Now we are a four versus a four. I'll throw in the dodge. So that gives us a five versus a four. We are one up. Chaos bag gives us a skull, which is a minus one. Good job we did that. Um, so yes, five versus a four. So uh, that's right, isn't it? Four, five versus a four. We got a skull, which means that we take a horror. Um, but we do three more to the ghoul priest. And the ghoul priest goes down. Ah! There we are. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That was really fast. Ah, wow. The only thing that slowed us down really was that we didn't quite have the cards that we needed um, in terms of willpower um, to to really um, take out the ghoul priest. Uh, good job we got Leader Chandler. That worked really well. Um, obviously, having the having the blessed cards also made uh, blessed cards blessed chaos tokens they really did make a difference uh, although not as much as i would have thought with that many of them in the, the 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 bag but um all in all sister mary did much 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 better than i imagined that she would do she was really really fast while she's not the fastest turn seven is pretty damn fast yes yeah, so she's not absolutely the fastest but she's one of the fastest so she's done really really well so that was brilliant so thank you very much for watching please like comment and subscribe now next time on the investigator games we will take amanda sharp through the gathering yes she is the student and seeker investigator for the insmouth conspiracy and we will see how she goes. And I'm looking forward to uh, piloting Amanda through the gathering. But until then, I'm Krabby Terror 8. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.